Hi, have you ever wondered how this universe that we call home all came to be? Lots of theories about the origins of our universe have come and gone until one theory, in particular, came along that physicists and cosmologists could agree on. They agreed on it, of course, because there is scientific evidence to support it. And you may have heard of it. It's called the Big Bang Theory. The founders of this theory are two scientists from the 1920s. Georges Lemaitre and Alexander Friedman. They both used Einstein's theory of relativity to prove that the universe is in a constant state of expansion. Then in 1929, the American astronomer Edwin Hubble confirmed this theory again after observing evidence that virtually all clusters of galaxies appear to be moving away from all other clusters, which also indicates that the entire universe is expanding. Physicists agree that the theory is sound because the universe is, in fact, still expanding even now. If you open the Quran and read through all the verses that speak about the origin of the universe, you will find that it confirms what physicists have been saying about the same topic. For example, in chapter 51, verse 47, it says, And it is we, God, who have built the universe with our creative power and verily, it is we, God, who are steadily expanding it. What we know about the universe is that space was created first and gave birth to particles, galaxies, stars, the earth and you and me. In several places, the Quran also addresses the order in which various things were created in a manner consistent with what science has discovered. For example, in chapter 18, verse 51 it says, I, God, did not make them witness to the creation of the heavens and the earth or to the creation of themselves. The universe expanded from very high density and exploded in gravitational waves. The same gravitational waves from those colliding black holes in space that pass through the earth, causing the universe to stretch and expand over and over again. In chapter 41 of the Quran, verse 10, it says, In four days, he made in the earth what anchors from high above it, and put Baraka in it, and equally measured out sustenance of its dwellers for those who ask. Let's break down the meaning of this verse. When God says, He made in the earth what anchors from high above it, He is referring to the gravitational waves that are coming back from those colliding black holes in space that act as gravitational anchors to anchor the earth and anchor things to the earth. Then God says he put Baraka in it. Baraka is a word that people commonly use for blessings. But it actually has a deeper meaning, it means to grow and increase in volume above and beyond expectations. Emphasizing that the earth started out small but constantly grew larger and larger. A strange type of matter caused the expansion of the universe in its early stages. This matter behaves very differently from the matter that we are familiar with today because instead of attracting other matter, it repels it. This has led physicists to call it antimatter. Sounds to me like anti-social matter. Antimatter actually disobeys energy and momentum conservation, it disobeys symmetric charge conjugation and parity, and it disobeys our current one directional time arrow and disobeys causality. Because the early universe was filled with this type of self-repelling, disobedient matter, everything would be pushing against everything else and that would account for the sudden explosion that gave birth to the universe. Matter and antimatter particles are always produced in pairs. And if they come in contact, they annihilate one another, leaving behind pure energy. So why do we still see matter today? As far as physicists can tell, it's only because, in the end, there was one extra matter particle for every billion matter-antimatter pairs. After that, the first stars began to form. They formed from the dense gas of the young universe which came about when a cloud increased in density and then collapsed due to the action of the gravitational pull of gravity. The gravitational pull of gravity managed to anchor more and more matter from the collapsed cloud, resulting in the densest gas clumping and anchoring together, which eventually led to the formation of stars and even galaxies. The formation of stars then paved the way for the formation of everything else in our universe. You see, when a massive star, with a mass several times that of the Sun, reaches the end of its life, it compresses and explodes as supernova. And it appears that exploding stars or supernovae are extremely efficient at producing the dust or first solid particles that later forms Earth, like planets, rocks and people. Verse 11 of that same chapter in the Quran addresses these points when it says, Then he directed himself to the heaven while it was smoke, and said to the heavens and the earth, Come into being, willing to obey or disobey. They both said, we are willing to obey. From this verse, we can derive many things. Firstly, that space was created before earth, as God says, he created the earth, while heaven was a smoke. 
When God says, while it was smoke, about the heavens, it's confirming scientific beliefs that the smoke resulting from the exploding stars or supernova existed in space for a long time, before forming the rocky embryo of the Earth. So essentially, the Earth was a giant lump of this cosmic dust, anchored by gravity, that constantly grew larger and larger. Once it became large enough, gravity caused the Earth to become rounded, forming what is called a rocky embryo, and after 100 million years of this rocky embryo growing, voila, we have planet Earth. The Quran even alludes to the matter and antimatter that existed in the universe in this verse, when it says willing to obey or disobey, and then concludes by telling us that it is matter, not antimatter that managed to survive and still exists to this day, when it says, they said, we are willing to obey, when astrophysicists joke, they say supernova have bad habits because they belch out huge quantities of smoke, known as cosmic dust. Dr. Loretta Dunn, from Cardiff University describes cosmic dust by saying, cosmic dust consists of tiny particles of solid material floating around in the space between stars. It's not the same as house dust but more akin to cigarette smoke. Cosmic dust was also responsible for blocking the light emitted from stars and galaxies, meaning that for the first 380,000 years or so, our universe was essentially too opaque to shine. Physicist Imre Bartas from Columbia University states, gravitational waves arrive at Earth long before any light does. Which is exactly what verse 12 of chapter 41 indicates, he made in each heaven its affair, and adorned the nearest heaven with lamps. By using the lamps as an analogy for light, this verse reflects the fact that the universe was in darkness in its early stages. It further reflects the sequence of events we discussed earlier, as God mentioned, what anchors, first then mentioned the light, implying that gravitational waves arrived at Earth long before any light did, just as physicists such as Imre Bartas would confirm, over 1,400 years later. We've all heard of the Big Bang Theory, but what exactly is it all about? In this episode, we explain the sequence of cosmological events that lead to Earth's creation, and point out the specific verses in the Quran that tell us how the universe was created.